Our guest today is the president of the Cook County Board. Prior to be, being elected president of the county board, she served as alderman of the fourth ward in the city of Chicago for 19 years. Our guest today is known for her independence, her coalition building, and her commitment to practical results. She earned her bachelor's degree and her master's degree from the University of Chicago. Our guest today is a wife and mother of two children. Ladies and gentlemen, President of the Cook County Board, Tony Preckwinkle. <laughs> Madam President. Thank you all. And I am very grateful to Jay for that short introduction. <laughs> In my inaugural address, I promised that I would measure my administration by four key tenets. Fiscal responsibility, innovative leadership, transparency and accountability, and improved services. Our fiscal year 2011 budget recommendation reaffirms my commitment to fiscal responsibility. It's a commitment I'm determined to keep, and that determination is bolstered by the support that I've received around the county. Our residents clearly want a new direction, and it starts with responsible spending and accountability. They want leadership from the county that is willing to make tough decisions, and we've had to make our share of those already. I think it's important that everyone understand how thoroughly we reviewed the county's finances, its personnel, and its structure. Following the November election, our transition teams got to work, and some of you in this room were part of them. I'm grateful to you. <coughs> Along with the transition teams, staff from the Civic Consulting Alliance and Accenture provided pro bono help and we began meeting with county officials to review the county's finances and begin to prepare a budget for fiscal year 2011. On November 18th, I called a meeting of 11 Cook County elected officials to discuss the $487 million deficit that we faced. By the way, this deficit is greatly impacted by our fixed costs, health insurance, workers' compensation, and pensions. And these matters require long-term structural changes. I asked all of the citywide elected officials, the countywide elected officials, to find 16% savings in their offices and to do so with a focus on operating costs in the budget equation. This meeting was only the first of many. There would be many, many, many more meetings among myself, my top staff members, county administrators, and their staff. Many people worked long days and nights to prepare our budget proposal, which was submitted on February 1st. And I think we can all now agree it was not an easy process. We didn't frankly anticipate that it would be, but we got through it by keeping open the lines of communication, listening to the concerns of our elected officials and department administrators, looking for opportunities to find common ground and defending our budget recommendation. We stood firm on the budget cuts that we put forth in November, and the budget is now in the hands of the Board of Commissioners, the legislative body. It's through this commitment to co the collaborative process that we put in place that we've been able to make historic changes in the budget, all in the interest of building a sensible and sustainable future for Cook County government. The budget situation meant that there were no easy options. Toughest of all was approving the layoffs. This pained me very deeply. I never thought the job was going to be easy, but I was ready for hard work. I never imagined that I would walk in the door as president of a county board and then two months later put 1,300 people out of a job. 
I know that the majority of these people are ordinary, hardworking folks, and it's difficult to accept. But as I've said before, no one is alone and no one will be absolved. I was determined that the President's office would lead by example as we worked through the financial crisis. In the office of the President, we made 17% cuts overall to our budget. Within my office, my own office personally, we cut staff by 30%, we reduced non-personnel costs by 51%, and on top of that I took a 10% pay cut. However, this budget proposal isn't just about cutting operating budgets. It's also about instituting structural changes that will increase efficiencies and promote fiscal responsibility throughout the county for years to come. We targeted historically inefficient departments, like the highway department. We reviewed their budgets, the way they utilized personnel, the way they ran their offices, and then we made recommendations to improve the way each department was run. We asked our department administrators to identify inefficiencies and to make short and long-term plans to remediate them. While the cuts we made were significant, they were done with the consideration for the services that we had to provide to our residents. My staff and I worked with Tom Dart and his staff on a solution that would reduce his budget but allow him the flexibility he needs to run the county jails and protect our residents. The sheriff agreed to cut his budget by 12% and to contribute to our effort towards solving the budget challenge. We're committed to working together with the sheriff to identify efficiency and cost-saving initiatives throughout the criminal justice system. Our two offices will begin a joint task force to address issues involving employee absences and the use of family and medical leave by county personnel. We also will look for ways to streamline county operations by pursuing shared service opportunities and working to eliminate layers of management. All of these initiatives reflect our commitment to spending without impacting our ability to improve the quality of services that we deliver to Cook County residents. For that reason, my staff and I, along with the state's attorney and her staff, work collaboratively to craft a plan to achieve a 10% reduction in the state's attorney's budget in 2011. We met our shared objective, which was to achieve a 10% reduction and minimize attorney layoffs. This was achieved by initiatives such as direct budgeting, directing budget money set aside for outside counsel to fund assistant state's attorneys and focusing on shared services. Additionally, the state's attorney shares my commitment to instituting stricter performance management metrics throughout the county. Over the years, the state's attorney has been asked to do more with less, and they have found ways to successfully handle a tremendous caseload while maintaining a high standard for the service of our people. We will use the state's attorney's office as a model for the rest of the county when it comes to performance management. I must also mention the work of the Cook County Health and Hospital System under the leadership of Bill Foley, which was able to pledge a 21% cut in their subsidy. This is the result of expediting, expediting the implementation of their strategic plan, which was already in place. It's not enough to cut government alone, however. We have to rethink the way in which government works. Take, for example, the President's office. Unfortunately, this office exemplified the county's lack of budget controls. The President's office proper was allocated $2.3 million. However, upon, at least that was what was in the budget. However, upon walking in the door, we quickly realized that they were actually spending at a rate of 2.9 million. That means in order to make our 17% cut, we had to, to excise 1 million out of our budget. Moving forward, budget controls will be in place and they will be non-negotiable. What is budgeted for a certain office is what will be spent. And it's our goal to have departments come in under budget at the end of the year. The planning process for future county budgets must include meaningful objective performance measures. I'm taking the lead. We are accountable for the tax dollars that we fund our budget with, and each county agency and department will be required to prepare a quarterly report in which it establishes measurable goals and articulates how it's meeting those goals. Grants, fees, staffing levels, benefits, salaries, and capital projects these are important elements of our county's fiscal picture, both in revenue and expenditures. We're setting up a new system in which these items will be reviewed on a regular basis, 
so that they can be assessed, monitored, and incorporated into the budget. You cannot manage without measuring first. Our performance management effort is about improving services. Businesses and municipalities have implemented similar programs and have had great success in improving services to customers and residents. In my inaugural address, I pledged that the fiscal year 2011 budget would include a commitment to reduce the sales tax by a quarter of a percent in 2012 and a quarter of a percent in 2013. I remain committed to that pledge and I'm currently working with fellow board members to induce such an amendment to the 2011 budget. We must break the bad habits that got us here. We must build a new foundation to stabilize our finances. We're already in the first quarter of 2011. The county's fiscal year be begins December 1st. And we're just now in the process of reviewing a budget. When I took office, there was no working budget no draft of a financial plan. As I've said before, this is a very bad practice. That's why as soon as we pass the 2011 budget, we will begin to work on next year's. It's a time-consuming process and it will take many months to overall the budget process and to build it in a way that incorporates the new initiatives that we've developed. Cook County has been in need for a long time of comprehensive desk audits. We have employees who lack job titles, or have job titles that do not match their job descriptions. In some cases, employees don't even have a formal job description. Our, administers can't, our administrators can't determine redundancies or how to best utilize their staff resources without this basic information. We've engaged a pro bono consultant to begin working on a comprehensive desk audit of the 2,000 employees under the President's purview, and we hope to expand this effort across the county. The report that is generated by this project will give us the ability to right-size the organization, specifically in terms of the ratio of managers to employees, and we're starting in the President's office. The critical initiative will be completed within the first 100 days that we're in office, and already the Treasurer has announced a desk audit of her employees, and we're hopeful that other elected officers will follow soon. The county spends tens of millions of dollars on purchasing and procurement. In the 2011 budget, we estimate that we can save $12 million by using contingency contracting and improving the way our organization is designed and the process by which we purchase materials and services. All of this while embracing our commitment to partnering with minority and women-owned vendors. As I said before, we're making county government leaner and meaner by increasing efficiency, cross-training to make our personnel more, have, give our personnel a more diverse skill set, and asking our employees to do more. We're going to refocus on the county's core mission and the services we provide to residents. I want a county government that promotes opportunity and innovation and demands responsibility and accountability. On www.cookcountyillinois.gov, we've posted the full budget, a budget summary, and a schedule of the upcoming budget hearings. These are some of the first steps that we must take if we're going to change the culture of county government. We cannot continue to spend without control and manage without measure. We can do better, and my staff and I will work to do better. Thank you very much. Uh. Mingle, Jenny, mingle. If you have a question, raise your hand. Uh, Jenny will take it. Uh, a lot of people are. Come on, Jenny. You're... Well, I have a question. Doll Joy Saxon, always. The Lawrence Spivak of this organization. You must. You know who he refused. Okay. Don't have to remind me. You remember Lawrence. Okay. Please, uh, this is Joyce Saxon, board member. Please define contingency contracting. Sure, that's, that's having services available when you need them as opposed to paying for them uh, outright in bulk. Snappy question, snappy answer. Uh, <laughs> Shire Rivette, Chicago Children's Advocacy Center. What is your position on the future administration of the health hospital system and its provision of medical services to the county's medically underserved residents. 
Oh, no, not from Eric. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, our county uh, health care system faces a big challenge. Uh, as you all know, uh, as a result of the uh, reforms in health care that were passed last year in Congress, um, we will be in a situation where a lot more people will be covered uh, with health care insurance in, in 2014. And the question for our health care system is uh, whether or not they can compete with the for-profit and not-for-profit uh, health care entities that are out there when we have this expanded base of people who have insurance. In the past, our, our, our public system has been a system of default. Those who, who did not have resources went to the county. And it's unclear when people have choices whether they will continue to use, to use county services, our clinics and, and particularly our hospitals. Um, and unfortunately, as you all know, there was a, a devil's bargain made in the, in the health care bill, and that was that we would exclude the undocumented. And Chicago, of course, has a large undocumented uh, population of all descriptions, and those folks will have no coverage. And of course, we serve the undocumented in our public system at present. So we've got two challenges. One, how are we going to compete in, a, in an environment in which people have choices, have insurance and have choices, and don't have to use the public system? And secondly, uh, what are we going to do if, um, in this competitive environment, those who do not have coverage, who have fallen through the cracks or who are undocumented, disproportionately choose our system? In which case, we'll, we'll be providing care for those who have no resources to pay for their care without any compensation at all. So um, I suggest you ask Bill Foley to come back and, and talk about this. Um, but. But those are the challenges that I, that I see. Um, as to our present direction, um, those of you who have looked at the, the health care system's uh, strategic plan know that they're moving toward an emphasis on, on specialty care. Uh, there are a lot of federally qualified health clinics, what we call FQHCs, out there um, who, which are providing primary care. So our, our public clinics complement uh, and provide some of the same services as the FQHCs. Uh, but there's a, there's a gap in the provision of specialty care. And our system is moving toward providing more specialty care and providing, frankly, hospital care uh, at one institution, and that institution will be John Stroger. Uh, the plan in place now uh, closes hospital care at, at Oak Forest, reduces it substantially at Provident just to serve an emergency room, and then uh, concentrates it at, at John Stroger. Two more questions. Actually, three more because the moderator has a question, but I'll go last. Mark Weinmiller, a small business owner. Uh, Forest Preserve, please. How about merge with the sheriff? Um, I was listening to the budget hearings today, and Lawrence Massal was there from the Civic Federation talking about how we um, ought to have a separately elected Forest Preserve board. And um, I have talked to him about this. Uh, over the last year and made it clear that this is not my position. My position is that we should try good governance of the Forest Preserve before we um, decide that it's impossible for the county board commissioners and the president of the county um, to run that system. And we brought over there Arnold Randall, who is a former uh, City of Chicago Planning Department uh, Commissioner and also uh, moved up the ranks in the Park District. I think he ended up as head of the Intergovernmental Affairs there. So he has extensive experience both in planning and in parks in the city. Um, I'm pleased that he was willing to take the job, as well as Mary Lariah. Many of you in this room may know Mary. Um, she worked in community development at LaSalle Bank, and before that was executive director of the Metropolitan Planning Council, MPC, um, and has an extensive background uh, both in, in fiscal management and, and, uh, and planning as well. So I'm pleased with the team that's there. Uh, I've asked them to, to look over the next several months at all of their operations and personnel and come back to us with recommendations. And one of the uh, items on that list is, is what to do about um, the sheriff's, what to do about the Forest Preserve Police and their possible uh, relationship to the sheriff's office. But we're not there yet. Uh, I've, as I said, I've asked them to kind of uh, review everything under their purview and come back with recommendations, and I trust they'll do that, and then we'll see what we can do about acting on it. So at the moment, it's under consideration. A surprising editorial comment from the moderator. You know there are three or four Lawrence Massals. You know that. He has been cloned. Um, <laughs> and free advice. 
this county and this state has enough elected officers. Uh, <laughs> I'm not running. Uh, an anonymous person who I know who it is, but who he or she will remain anonymous, who late returns. Uh, what do you miss about the city council? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> so did my friend Tom Tunney ask this question or what? You know, I, I served in the, in the city council for almost 20 years and I had uh, a lot of friends there and um, was pretty much my comfort zone. I won't say that this job is yet my comfort zone, but, um, and I, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the best jobs in the city, being an alderman, as Chuck can tell you. Um, you get to, to know your constituents on a pretty intimate level, and um, the, the actions that you take uh, can have a dramatic impact on the communities that you serve. So I, I miss that uh, kind of ground level opportunity uh, to make change, and I miss the good people that were my colleagues. Uh, Barbara Olson, uh, City Club member. Considering the level of unemployment, what plans are you developing for training and workforce development? <laughs> All right, so the, the county has a President's Office of Employment and Training, uh, which has pretty much been a disaster. Um, <laughs> we've returned money to the federal government. We recently had to suspend um, seven employees for inappropriate uh, actions. Uh, we face a real challenge. Uh, and I understand we've just been told by the state we've got to clean up our act pretty quickly here and get a lot of money out the door by June. Um, and we're going to spend this week trying to figure out how we're going to do that. Um, we have a great opportunity with the federal resources that are provided to us to support employment training outside the city of Chicago in the western and southern suburbs. Um, and I'm hopeful um, that uh, with Karen Norrington Reeves' leadership, she's somebody who came to us from the state and is now head of, of POET, the President's Office of Employment and Training. Under her leadership, we can make some real changes. Um, we're going to have to begin by kind of cleaning up our act there. Uh, one of my favorite stories is we learned the suburban Cook County is divided into two districts for the provision of, of employment training services. There's a northern district and then there's a western and southern one. In the northern district, they have half as much money as we do. I think they have four employees and one consultant. Is that right, Kurt? Kurt Summers is my chief of staff, so he's the keeper of all this minutia. Um, so they have four, four staff people and one consultant, and we have like 57 people and twice as much money. So um, we're going to have to make some changes in terms of downsizing that department and, and uh, cleaning up conduct, and um, probably a lot of people are going to be gone. So we're going to have to make some dramatic changes there, and it's overdue. On David Mooring, who's not a member of the City Club. David, this is your last freebie. <laughs> This is pay to say. Uh, <laughs> watch this. And if you want more of this kind of, you know what, come here tomorrow. Uh, as, from David, as Cook County becomes leaner in staff and organization, what strategy might evolve with administrative and service facilities? You kind of cover that, but give them a shot. Well, what I've, what I've said to everybody, um, separately elected officials, my own staff, we're going to have to figure out how to deliver services well with fewer resources, both staff resources and money. Um, we're going to have to think more carefully about sharing services. Um, and on that subject, uh, the county of Cook has as many information technology folks as the whole state of Illinois. So we've got to figure out, <laughs> because every separate elected official has their own in information technology. Uh, group. So we're going to have to figure out how to share services. Um, everybody, for example, was also ordering their own vehicles, so we need some kind of fleet management. Um, we've got to figure out um, sharing services, being more uh, strategic about our sourcing, um, figuring out how we can get our goods and services at lower cost. We've got a lot of ways in which we need to look at saving money and, and hopefully continuing to deliver good service. Uh, two more questions. This is from Jim Eggerberg. The village is at Westchester. Uh, what, what pension reforms would you propose? Huh. <laughs> 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 
So I've spent virtually my um, entire adult life in not-for-profit organizations and in government. Um, so this is a, an important issue for me, personally. There was a time when government employees were not very well paid, uh, but they got as compensation very good health benefits and pension coverage. And what's happened over time is the salaries have become more comp comparable um, and the benefits are now, in relation to, to the general population, very generous. Very generous. Uh, so frankly, my view is that we're going to, uh, as, as public employees, which of course I'm one, uh, we're going to have to pay more for both our health care and our pensions, um, and frankly expect less. Um, it's not fair that government employees should be privileged in this way, that we should have better health care coverage in the main than ordinary folks uh, in the larger society and better pensions. Um, and if we want to continue to have the generous pensions that we've had, we're going to have to pay a lot more for them. So how exactly that gets translated, all of these are matters that um, I think 80% of our workforce is unionized, so these are matters that will come, uh, come up in contract negotiations. But that's my personal view. Um, I know if you've been reading the papers, you've seen what trouble um, the state of Illinois and the various of our city pensions are. The county's in a little better shape, but um, given the collapse of the market in 2008, where our, our, our pension coverage went down too. So um, these are tough issues that we're going to have to negotiate with our, with our unions, but uh, my position is pretty clear, and that is that public employees are going to have to pay more. Uh, okay. This is the next, no, no, this is, any media, you see Ms. Preckwinkle on your own. Uh, we don't, uh, even, even WBEZ, uh, you know, you could talk, ask her. Last question, it's anonymous, but you'll probably figure out who asked it. Will you have a constant nine vote majority on the county board? <laughs> well, Commissioner Fritchie is here, he should, uh, he should tell me whether we're okay, gonna have we have <laughs> You know, this is a work in progress. Um, uh, never having served in the body. Uh, you know, John Stroger, for example, was a member of the body as well as president. Um, and I think that, that had some advantages, although it was inappropriate to be both <laughs> head of the executive branch and a member of the legislative branch. Um, and over the last uh, two months, we've... <laughs> over the last two months, we've, we've, uh, we've worked hard to establish relationships with the commissioners. Um, we're hopeful we'll have the nine votes that we need uh, to pass our budget substantially as we uh, submitted it and that we'll have nine votes going forward. Um, but, you know, we, we're taking a, a collaborative view of working with the legislative branch and uh, that involves give and take. Um, we're hopeful that we'll have the nine votes that we need uh, on the critical issues that face us going forward. How about a round of applause? <laughs>